Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, we're going to look at the PowerPoint 2016 exam, and we're looking at the domain called Insert and Format Text, Shapes, and Images. Overall, this accommodates for 20 to 25% of the overall exam. Let me go ahead and throw up a graphic so you can look at the domain with me. This video got a little long, so what I'm going to do is split this up into two different videos. This is part one of the video. And in this video, we're going to cover insert and format text and insert and format shapes and text boxes. Let's go ahead and jump into PowerPoint. We are talking about the PowerPoint 2016 exam, and we're looking at the domain called insert and format text shapes and images, we're looking at the subdomain called insert and format text. The first thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to insert text on a slide. Let's go ahead and insert a brand new slide because there's nothing on this slide and we can go ahead and type. In order to insert text on a slide, all we need to do is click within a text box and begin typing. That was the title part of the slide. We could do that in the bottom part. It's as simple as just clicking in a text box and typing. The next thing it tells us that we need to be able to do is to apply formatting and styles to text. Let me go ahead and select this text. We're on the Home tab and we're in the Font group. And while this group seems small, there's really a lot in here. Most of you will be familiar with changing the font type and the font size, as well as bold, italics, and underlined. But some of the things that are missed is right here. The character spacing, you can change that right here. You can also click more, which brings this dialog box open. You have the change case. So you have the opportunity of making it all uppercase if you chose. And then you have this button right here, clear all formatting. So if I had made this red and I click clear all formatting. Notice that the red disappeared and it resized my text. And then the final thing that you should note within this is opening up the font dialog launcher box. Because again, there's a lot going on in here. You should be familiar with this screen, especially the effects. And then you have the character spacing here. And then one last thing I want to talk about as far as formatting and stylizing text is in the paragraph group. You have the left, center, and right align, as well as justified. You also have the text direction and align text. And then to add to the fun, we can increase and decrease our bullets and text. The next thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to apply word art styles to text. Let me go back to my first slide. We'll go to the insert tab. What most people do is select this text, go to the insert tab, and in the text group, select word art, and then try to create word art from there, and it doesn't work for them. Let me go ahead and undo that. With this text selected, we get the drawing tools format tab, and we get the word art styles here. This is where you'd want to make that change. In a course on the exam, it's going to tell you a specific word art type. You want to make sure you hover if you're not sure what you're selecting because it will give you the title of the word art you're selecting. We'll go ahead and select this one. This subdomain tells us that we need to be able to format text in multiple columns. Let's go ahead and go to this sixth slide because there's a lot of content here. What I'm going to do is put my cursor here in this text box. I'm on the Home tab. I'm in the Paragraph group, and right here is my Add and Remove columns. I'm going to click this to get the dropdown. And you have one, two, and three columns, but you should also be familiar with the more columns, just in case you have to specify spacing in addition to the amount of columns that you need. Go ahead and just make this two and click OK. And it went ahead and it split this text into two columns. Let's go to slide five. This subdomain tells us that we need to be able to create bulleted and numbered list. Now, by default, it has the bullets. We're on the Home tab. We're in the Paragraph group. Let's go ahead and change this to a number. And when I click that, the default numbering appeared. You have a drop down for both bullets and numbers, and you can choose one of these. Same thing with bullets. 
It gives you a default one, but you can choose from this list. You should also be familiar with bullets and numbering here, which is going to open up a different window. You'll have the option of changing the size and color. But the big thing here is being able to insert your own picture. So I'll click that. On the exam, it'll most likely be from a file. If you're going to have to create a bullet from a picture, you can click browse. For this, we'll go ahead and just select the PowerPoint icon. And notice that right here, it went ahead and it placed that image of the PowerPoint icon as a bullet. And the last thing it tells us that we need to be able to do is to insert hyperlinks. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and select this first line of text. And by habit, I'm a right clicker. And I normally just right click and go to hyperlink. Or you can go to the insert tab. And in the links group, you'll select hyperlink. Now you can hyperlink in multiple ways. Normally what we do is probably just type in a website. So we'll just type in www.youtube.com. And if I click OK, that text will send me to the YouTube website. You can also place within this document if you need to go to a specific slide. You can do that from here. Or you can do an email address and you can start typing the email address. You should be familiar with multiple ways to hyperlink text. We'll go ahead and click OK here. And now this is a hyperlink. We're looking at the subdomain called Insert and Format Shapes and Text Boxes. The first thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to insert and replace shapes. I'm going to go ahead and go to the Insert tab. We're in the Illustrations group. I'm going to click the Shapes drop down. And I'm just going to choose this oval. And I'll click here so that it just draws it. And actually drew a circle. So we've gone ahead and we've inserted a shape, but it also tells us that we need to be able to replace the shape. So with this circle selected, we have the Drawing Tools Format tab. We're in the Insert Shapes, and what we want to do here is select Edit Shape, and then we have the Change Shape. So maybe we wanted the smiley face here instead. It went ahead and it changed that from an oval or circle to a smiley face. This subdomain also tells us that we need to be able to insert text boxes. Let's go back to the Insert tab. We're in the Text group. And what I'm going to do is select Text Box. And if you look carefully, my cursor's changed. Now I have the option of clicking and dragging the text box, or I can just click. And by just clicking, it just creates a small text box. And what it will do is conform the text box to my type. When I'm done, I can click out of that. And now I have this text box with text in it. This subdomain tells us that we need to be able to resize shapes and text boxes. With this text box selected, I have the option of just clicking and dragging it out. I might be asked to make this a specific size. So with this text box selected, I have the Drawing Tools Format tab at the top. And in my size group, I can manually put in the height and width. And I can also pop out the size dialog launcher box. And I'll get a few more size options as well as position options if I choose to pop this open. Same thing with the shape. With the shape, I can click and just drag it around. Or with it selected, I get the Drawing Tools Format tab. I have the height and the width here. Or you can click this if this pane is not open to get more options. I'm going to close out of this. This subdomain tells us that we should be able to format shapes and text boxes. So with my shape selected, I have the Drawing Tools Format tab. Some things that I can do is change the shape fill. So maybe I want this color. I can change my shape outline. Maybe I want this white. We have some shape effects. So maybe I wanted to add a shadow. A little hard to see some of these changes. I also have this shape styles dialog launcher box, which gives me more format shape options. We have fill and line. We have the effects here. And then we have the size and properties, which we've already looked at. Same thing with my text box. With this selected, I can fill my text box with a color. I can add an outline. Let's add a glow to this one. Let's do this yellow to make it stand out. With this text, we also have text fill. We can do a text outline, some text effects as well. Maybe we want to transform. And then in our shape format panel, we have some text options here that we can play around with as well. 
And then the final thing that this subdomain wants us to know is to be able to apply styles to shapes and text boxes. So let's go back to the smiley face. And on our drawing tools format tab, we're in the shape styles group. If I click this, we have the theme styles here. So maybe I want something that's already been made up. I could just click and select any of those. And I selected that on the certification exam. It's going to tell you which one to choose. So if you're not sure, you should hover over the style until you figure out which one you should select. And we have the same options with our text box here. 